This video is a continuation of the topic on water from Chapter 4 of Biology from 4, Chemical Composition in a Cell. So, in the first video, we studied about water and some of its properties. So, in this second video, we'll continue to study a few more properties of water and functions of water. So, this is Water Part 2. The learning outcomes for this lesson is as follows. After the lesson, we should be able to explain the properties of water and number two, explain the functions or the importance of water in the cells, as well as relate the functions to the properties of water. Let us look at this schematic diagram on the properties of water once again. In the first video, we have already studied four properties of water. That is, number one, water is a polar molecule. Number two, water is a good solvent. Number three, water has cohesive and adhesive forces. Number four, water has a high specific heat capacity. In this video, we'll be discussing number five, water has a high latent heat of vaporization. And number six, solid water or ice is less dense than liquid water. The fifth property of water is that it has a high latent heat of vaporization. The latent heat of vaporization is defined as the amount of heat required to change one kilogram of a mass of liquid into a vapor state, into its vapor state without a change in its temperature. Okay, so for water, a lot of heat energy is needed just to change it from liquid to vapor state without the change in temperature during the process of evaporation. The reason for this is because, again, the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules need to be broken first. So this used to, the heat is used to break the hydrogen bonds first before evaporation can occur. Now, the application of this in daily life is that when a person is hot, he will sweat and the sweat will absorb the body heat. It's actually the water in the sweat that absorbs the body heat. So the water having a high latent heat of vaporization will absorb a lot of body heat from the skin in order to evaporate. So as it evaporates, it will take away that body heat and it will cool down the body very fast. This is evident when you splash your face with some water, especially when you're hot or you take a bath. When you come out, you feel very cool because the water has absorbed that body heat, a lot of body heat in order to evaporate. And this will cool down the body effectively. The sixth property of water, which is unusual, is that ice is less dense than liquid water. Ice is the solid form of water. It is less dense than the liquid water itself. So this is an anomaly. That means it's something strange and different from most substances. For most substances, the solid form is denser than the liquid form. Okay. Now, we can prove that solid ice is less dense and lighter than liquid water at 4 degrees Celsius by dropping some ice cubes into a cup of water or a drink and you'll see the ice cubes floating upwards. Okay, this is a common observation and uh, sometimes we don't realize this is something strange about water. Okay, the solid uh, ice is less dense and lighter than liquid water. So the reason for this is also very interesting. is because the water molecules in an ice crystal are spaced further apart compared to molecules in liquid water. And all this is because in the solid state, in the ice, the hydrogen bonds are still present and they will space the water molecules further apart than in the liquid state. Let us look at the three states of water, the gaseous state, the liquid state and the solid state. So in the gaseous state, water forms the water vapor. In the water vapor, the molecules of water have the most kinetic energy 
of the three states. So they move very fast and they don't form any hydrogen bonds between themselves, between the water molecules. However, in the liquid state, the molecules have less kinetic energy and they are vibrating. They don't move around that much and they form hydrogen bonds between each other. So you can have hydrogen bonds between two water molecules or three or four and so forth. And even between different sets of water molecules. In the solid state, there's even less energy and the water molecules are fixed in position with the hydrogen bonds that fix them further apart from each other and they are arranged in a ring shape which is six-sided like a hexagonal shape okay six water molecules in a hexagonal shape and here you have another six water molecules so this type of pattern we call the is called the ice lattice and notice that in the center there are no molecules and it's an empty place or space so this makes the ice less dense compared to liquid water apart from the fact that the hydrogen bonds are make the molecules uh, be positioned further apart are fixed further apart from each other since ice is less dense than water at four degrees celsius this means that it is lighter than the water. Thus, when it is winter time, the ice will float on top of the water in the ponds. And when the ice floats on top of the water, it acts as an insulator from the cold air above. This means that it prevents the cold from getting to the water. Insulator means it prevents the cold air, the cold, from getting into the water and freezing the water below. So with the ice there in place on top of the water, the water will remain in a liquid state and it does not freeze. So aquatic organisms can survive below the ice through the cold winter. If the ice were denser than water, it will sink to the bottom and this will cause the lake to freeze from the bottom upwards and all the organisms will die and be frozen during winter time. So ice being less dense than water is important for the survival of the aquatic organisms especially in winter time. Here's an interesting fact in the Arctic regions, there's one organism that needs the floating sea ice very desperately, and that is the polar bear. Polar bears use the floating sea ice as platforms to hunt for seals. And sometimes the seals will come to rest on the floating sea ice. That's where the polar bear is able to attack them and hunt them as food. So without the floating sea ice, especially with the climate that's warming up nowadays, the sea ice is becoming less and less in number and so the polar bears are starving to death and are on the brink of extinction. We will look at a few more examples or general functions of uh, water that we will not relate to any property of water. So the function of water in the body Water helps in lubrication. For example, mucus, which contains a lot of water, the sticky substance uh, that's produced in the intestines, lubricates the movement of food. It makes the movement of food smoother without friction so that there's no pain. And uh, it will lubricate the movement of the food that's being digested and also when the food is being absorbed and moved through the intestines, the small intestines, for example. Okay. So another example of lubrication is at the joints. The synovial fluid is a fluid found at the joint, which is the meeting place between two bones. 
This fluid contains water too and it helps to lubricate the joints so that there's less friction between the bones so that there's no pain during movement. Okay. An important function of water in plants is that it is a substrate or reactant used in photosynthesis. Here is a, an equation that is not balanced, but it shows you the substances needed by the plant to carry out photosynthesis and the products. So water and carbon dioxide reacts together in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight to form glucose and oxygen. Thus, water is needed in photosynthesis and it is absorbed by the roots of the plants up to the leaves, transported to the leaves for this process to be carried out. Without water, there is no photosynthesis and the plant will not be able to produce organic food substances. Lastly, water plays an important role to give support to the plant so that the plant does not wilt. So in hypotonic soil solution, which is soil solution that is more dilute than the cell sap, it has a higher concentration of water molecules compared to the cell sap of the cells. So water will diffuse into the plant cells by osmosis. Vacuum will expand as seen here as it stores the water and it will press against the cell wall creating the turgor pressure. Okay, So the cell will become turgid that means full of water and firm and this gives support to the plants. If all the cells are turgid, it will cause the stem to be upright and the leaves held out horizontally for photosynthesis.